The country Nigeria following the security alerts by the United States Embassy in Nigeria to U.S. citizens in Abuja on planned terrorist attacks. The Department of State Services, DSS, has called on Nigerian citizens to be at alert to remain calm. The U.S. Embassy had issued a security alert to Americans on Sunday, noting that there was impending terrorist attack on public places in Abuja. However, reacting to the development, the DSS spokesperson Peter Afunaya says it is working with other law enforcement agencies and stakeholders to maintain peace and order in and beyond Abuja. Well, joining me now is security management and intelligence expert Kabiru Adamu. Joins me here this uh, very afternoon to unpack this development. Thank you so much for being here, Kabiru. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Now, Nigeria's DSS has called for calm uh, following the terror alert by the U.S. How worried should Nigerians be considering the fact that the alert or warning did not come directly from the DSS? Um, as in situations like this, uh, you know, and given the antecedents of the Americans with regards to intelligence, I think every, every Nigerian should not be worried in that sense, but to take the alert seriously. Um, they were very specific. They mentioned the threat. Uh, they said it's a terror um, threat alert. They also mentioned the lo likely locations, and they also indicated the style of targeting. So I think Nigeria should take that seriously and heed um, the, the, the advice. For the government, um, that's the Nigerian government, I think there is a need to do a little bit more. So as an example, since we have a friendly relationship with the U.S. government, I think it's um, it, it wouldn't be out of place to invite the American ambassador to ask questions. Um, what is the basis of um, this terror alert? Uh, was, was it shared with the Nigerian intelligence community? If, if it was shared with the Nigerian intelligence community, why didn't any department of the Nigerian government release that advisory before the U U.S. Embassy? Uh, the third part of my comment would be the elections. Um, if you recall, if you take yourself back to 2014, there was a similar terror alert by the American embassy, and a lot of analysts interpreted it as an attempt to involve um, or you know, determine the outcome of the elections. So let's hope that that is not what is repeating itself. Again, an invitation of the American ambassador, a discussion between the Ministry of Foreign Affairs with the ambassador would help unravel the truth behind this. All right, but how can the country's uh, law enforcement agencies, I mean, and um, stakeholders uh, do better in actually maintaining peace and order in the nation's capital and other places, aside from just Abuja? What about other states as well? So intelligence is essentially um, grassroots. And the major worry with the Nigerian approach to both national security and national defense is the overemphasis on of the military role. Now, unfortunately, the military is not set out to capture grassroots intelligence. The other agencies of government, uh, including the police, the DSS, um, have more responsibility in that regard. But beyond the DSS, there are also several organizations that are domiciled under the Ministry of Interior. Uh, so you have the NSCDC, You've got, to an extent, the, the um, prisons and the custodial center, and, and several others under the Ministry of Interior. They are more appropriately structured to harness this grassroots intelligence. So as a country, I think we need to start looking at how do we strengthen the capacity of these organizations to harness um, this grassroots intelligence. Um, if you recall, uh, way back in the 1970s um, and 1980s, we had intelligence organizations that had um, assets within markets in Nigeria. So you'd see a cobbler, but he's actually an intelligence operative. You see someone mimicking to be a madman, but he's actually an intelligence um, operative. So we need to go back to that era where we start gathering and harnessing grassroots intelligence. And then of course, not only that, having a central pool where this intelligence is domiciled, so that the 27 ministries, departments, and agencies in security are able to pull from that central pool and use it appropriately. Mm. Well, just this October, the U.S. issued a similar travel um, advisory for Libya and also warned its citizens uh, not to travel to Libya uh, due to crime, terrorism, and, of course, um, armed conflict, among others. Now, is there a pattern to be concerned about here? Well, in the case of um, you know, um, travel alerts, uh, statutory um, alerts by foreign ministries, state departments, embassies. Uh, Nigeria does the same thing. I think just a few days ago, 
uh, the um, uh, you know chief executive of the diaspora commission, um, Honorable Abikeda, very relieved um, and alert for Nigerians in Cyprus. So that's statutory. Uh, all governments do that for their citizens. But where it becomes circumspect, and then it start um, you know questions start uh, arising is where there is no basis, for instance, to the issuance of the alert. What I mean by there is no basis, um, in this instance, it was issued by a foreign government in another land, directed at the citizens of that, of that country, especially for an ally. Um, the, one would have thought that that information would be shared with the Nigerian government, and then the Nigerian government will release it, not, not the other way around. Um, so that, that's kind of the worry here. Uh, but in terms of travel advices, travel alerts, those are statutory functions of foreign ministries and state departments or, um, you know, embassies or diplomatic representations. At the All right, Mr. Kabiru, um, preparations for the elections are actually on the way and um, the campaigns have started already. What are the security threats uh, that the incoming president should actually pay attention to and safeguard the lives of the citizens? I mean, it's not too early for us to start talking about this so we could actually pave the way and, of course, uh, lead the conversations. Your thoughts? No, definitely. Um, so uh, I would urge every listener to read our ironic consultancy. It's called Beacon Consulting, and um, we have a monthly report. It's free on our website. Uh, I urge every listener to read it. We highlighted the threats to the elections. And what time will allow me to say is um, INEC has done a risk, risk assessment, and that risk assessment has been able to identify locations, most of them in the northern half of the country, that could be threatened uh, by the activities of non-state actors. Now, there are other parts of the country too where INEC has highlighted. A good example is the Southeast, where the activities of non-state actors have already impacted on the capacity and capability of INEC to, to deliver credible elections. So INEC is good on, on that part. And as we are probably aware, INEC has an interagency consultative committee on election security. And that um, committee is co-chaired by the Inspector General of Police, as well as the National Security Advisor. Now, that committee has taken note of this um, concern by INEC, and it's also trying to address those concerns. I'm aware that the Inspector General of Police has put together a team, and that team is working um, you know, day and night to address that concern by INEC. And more importantly, his relief statements, reassuring Nigerians, reassuring INEC, reassuring the president that uh, they will do everything necessary to provide an atmosphere for free, fair, and credible elections. The same thing with the military. Uh, that are members of this um, interagency consultative committee on election security. Um, I know they've worked, they've conducted trainings at regional level, they've released SOP, SOP standard operating procedures for their personnel that will be involved in the election. So all of that is going on, and we're hopeful that by the time uh, we're ready for the election, which is in February and March, um, the, this committee that is made up of about 24 ministries, departments, and agencies that are involved in security in Nigeria would have brought the situation to a tolerable level to allow INEC to do its work. So I have to say that there is a toolkit um, for risk management that INEC is using, and that toolkit is also being used by these members of the Interagency Consultative Committee. So we are hopeful that as a result of the efforts um, and the concentration of the usage of this, this toolkit, the current security climate that threatens the election would have been managed and mitigated to allow the elections to hold. Thank you so much, um, security management and, of course, intelligence uh, expert Kabri Adamo for joining us on the news. Thank you very much for having me.